Hello there guys, uh, Austin Mangler here with another commentary, obviously. This is for Stitches, the uh, speed painting I did quite a while ago. There he is, sexy little man. So I'm just going to talk through some of the process. Hopefully it'll be a lot better than my last one. Um, I like to start off with a lot of... I download a lot of custom brushes and stuff. And so I find starting with just abstract kind of splatters and stuff is really useful for um, just finding interesting shapes and stuff. Interesting, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but when you're uh, drawing and sketching and things, if you just start putting down ink to paper or paint to canvas in this regard, then... Um, you'll see something emerge and, you know, keep carving away at it and forming an idea on the paper. That's what I pretty much do at the start of all my speed paintings. It's a lot more experimental than sketching on paper, I find. Um, on paper you can sketch out an idea, but you kind of know more about what it's going to be, whereas when you just put a random amount of brushes down on a canvas, it's quite quite loosey goosey. So a lot more room for crazy shit to happen. Like is happening right now. That's a really cool ink brush I got um, from another one of my many downloads from DeviantArt. I should you know, in a perfect world, I'd be like really organized and know exactly what brush pack that came from. But as you saw from the window into my little library of brushes, uh, I keep a bajillion different brushes. And, you know, I don't name them or anything, completely unorganized in that regard. But um, I don't know, it's kind of fun to keep playing with new ones. And I keep. I remember where they are anyway. So I'm just blocking in more shapes here. Um, got a rough idea of what he's going to be now, like a creepy demon guy with uh, oh gore coming out of his mouth. I get a lot of inspiration from horror, obviously. I played Doom 3 a lot when I was younger. And I still love that kind of muscly demon monster guy look. Adding some more de deets, details, I guess you can call them. Deets. I'm trying to be cool, you see. I'll get carried away with uh, detailing him a bit, and then I'll step back and try and complete the image as a whole, because with speed painting you want to at all times remember what the overall picture looks like and not get too stuck on details, because that's really not what the whole speed part of it is about, I guess. Um, I always have like pictures that have monsters and stuff posing to the to the left when you look at it. It's kind of weird. It's, it's something I noticed recently and um, maybe it's just something you'll only notice in your own work if you because you're the one who pays the most attention to it. But it's just something to be mindful of if you get stuck doing a lot of different monsters and they're all posing the same way once someone finds out, they might, you know, find a pattern and think you're a hack. So, <laughs> no, not at all. But, you know what I mean. There's more details. Skulls are sexy. So, put some skulls in there. Lots of grisly little bits everywhere. I'm having trouble with that arm, because... It's in the background and hard to judge what would be a good place for it to 
stop. That's why it's a good idea to sketch out ideas more. I did this a while ago, and if I had done it again, I would have. I would have. Another thing too is to start um, zoomed out more. Like you can always crop something if you need to. I've started quite cropped in on this guy, and if I had drawn more of his whole body, then maybe, maybe I would have completely changed the picture or anything. And I probably would have got that arm right a lot quicker. Because you can see when something's wrong compared to the rest of his body a lot easier than trying to draw it by itself. Still messing around with it, see? Just trying to... Just trying to you know, fluke my way into making it look right instead of actually using the technique. Shouldn't do that. So yeah, this is um, another one of my commentaries. Um, I've actually had a lot of developments on my YouTube channel recently. Um, I've become a partner with Boom Video, the network for Australian uh, YouTube users, um, so hopefully that will give me some nice exposure and it also gives me a lot of cool features like being able to customize my thumbnails and all that, you may have noticed, probably not, you've probably got lives and all that, but um, yeah, anyway, what it means is I'll get a little bit of profit from the ads too, which is good because the life of a struggling artist is fun. Um, and also, you know, it'll mean lots more videos and lots more content, hopefully, which is the best part. Thanks for all the continued watching and support. I know I haven't been very regular with my uploads, but I'm aiming to change that. Um, yeah. So here I'm trying to have a play with color. Not really working with it though. I'll probably give up soon. And yep, I think that was it. That was my foray into color on this piece. I don't know. Color versus black and white is quite, quite a hard one. Cause I always prefer black and white just because it's a lot more like moody and scary and. But also, obviously. Drawing and painting in black and white is a lot easier because value is so much more, you know, fundamental than trying to work in color and value. It's like a whole other thing. But, you know, obviously color does improve a piece when it's due. I've done a lot of black and white horror pictures and I can kind of get away with it because the theme of the picture is horror, so black and white lends itself to that. It's more of a primal kind of scary feeling. But I do need to work on colour. It's something I should be applying more often. Because you can still have horror in colour, obviously. There's me applying my splatter blood brush. I use that way too much. All the time. Need a need to cut back on the blood splatters, I think. Or maybe just go crazy and do more of it. It's always good to, you know, get a lot of different brushes and just experiment. And But what you should do that I don't do is find the ones you like and then delete the rest because otherwise, like me, you'll have a quite metalled, messed up library of random brushes everywhere. And that's not very productive, is it? So this guy looks pretty freaking crazy. Um, oh, he's got a little halo there. Random little, random little details like that I like to add. 
well, I sound so weird, but you know, although my monsters are somewhat generic, adding stuff like that, just little details, you can kind of trick people into thinking the rest of them is a lot more detailed, just by adding tattoos or piercings or something, something a little cool. Yeah, I think this is when I first got all these brushes and I was just having a big old play around with them, which is fun to do. Adding more fog. Once I discovered that by adding fog to the background and bringing someone forward by erasing it on a layer mask, like uh, the top layer there, layer 2 it says, but you know, the top layer there with the layer mask on it, that's a really great way to uh, bring bring out someone from the background. If you, if you add a lot of low opacity kind of dusty cloud, it uh, really makes, and then, and then of course, erase it so that the front person in the foreground pops, it really makes the image pop and yeah because you know the things in the foreground have the most contrast and things in the background have the less at the least. So yeah. Adding little cracks and details to his skull. It's good to focus on the areas that people are gonna look at, which is definitely the eyes and the face. That's what people look at the most, or what they're drawn to. Also because of the contrast of the little white dots surrounded by the black. It's very, very attention grabbing. Oh, and here I'm trying to add a little bit of weird circus kind of tattoos even. Looks like some sort of weird guy with the demonic tattoos. But yeah, just stuff like that. I don't know, I should probably do it more actually. If I spent a, a little bit more time on this and, you know, gave him some piercings or maybe a nipple piercing, that'd be cool. Something weird like that. Anyway, nearing the end of it now. Adding white highlights in cracks and stuff will really make something look shiny or make it look, you know, glossy. I've kind of gone overboard with all the white highlights there, like the the backlight, but um, it's a simple trick to also make things pop and stuff, like his left side right there. It's all really backlit. Anyway, I think that's about it. I uh, hope this was useful. Uh, thanks a lot. See ya.